Hi friends, I am Dr. Amrit Lal Mascarenas, Consultant Spine Surgeon at Manipal Hospital, Miller's Road. So uh, today uh, we are here to discuss with three of our guests about their spinal ailments. Then we have Anushka, a young lady who had, who had come presented with uh, a deformity of the spine, what we call a scoliosis, which can be quite uh, deforming and could be a cosmetic problem and could also lead to pain and complications in the future. So we had to uh, we had to uh, plan her treatment and she did undergo surgery and she'll be giving her us her inputs on what she went through before, during and after surgery and uh, so that it can be a message to our viewers as to young viewers as to how uh, they should uh, look at their spinal problems. We have uh, Anushka here. She is uh, 20. She came to me with the complaints of uh, a deformity of the spine. Uh, of course, she was uh, diagnosed uh, much earlier and uh, at the age of around 13 maybe. And then uh, she, the, the doctors then felt that uh, she did not need a surgery because the deformity of her spine was uh, too small. So the deformity, we are, what we are talking about is scoliosis, which is a sideward bending of the spine. And it can have its own uh, effects on uh, individuals. So uh, Anushka, could you uh, share with us uh, what were you uh, going through before the surgery? What was it that you were feeling? What were the things that made you uh, come to a spine specialist and uh, seek help. What were those main factors which disturbed you in your life that made you say, okay, yes, I think I need to undergo a surgery mm -hmm. of the spine? I was diagnosed with scoliosis much before I met the doctor, but with time, I think it became progressively worse and also um, the external deformity, the external appearance of it became worse and also in general just daily things like being able to sleep or wear certain kind of clothes all of that slowly became a little bit more challenging and so that's when my parents and I decided that maybe it was time to consult a spine specialist and just make sure that we do the right thing to treat the disorder. What, so what made you conscious? Is it your own appearance uh, in the mirror or was it some uh, uh, friends commenting or strangers commenting that they, hey there's something no or... so i would it was never negative comments it was more like people would notice because it was pretty noticeable um but it was never in the negative way it was more out of concern that they would come and ask me but yeah personally just looking into the mirror and seeing it and also not just the external appearance but more like being able to do daily things like if I want to do some sort of exercise or like I said sit a certain way or sleep in a certain position those also became a little more difficult. Also with the uh, progression of scoliosis uh, one develops pain mm -hmm. and uh, in the long run there can be weakness in the legs and uh, the spinal deformity becomes much more rigid and progresses gradually and that can lead to severe problems much later like at the age of 40 or 50 and that that could be a problem for individuals and at that point it becomes a much more challenging surgery so it's better to address uh, scoliosis and such deformities at a much younger age there's a popular myth among people that uh, we, uh, young children should not undergo surgery and that's really not true because the spinal canal the, size, the space meant for the nerves is fully formed by the age of six to seven years and uh, the deform the bony structure gets fully formed by between the age of 10 to 16 and uh, fusing the spine correcting deformities really doesn't lead to loss of height people have another apprehension that they lose height because of uh, while we fuse and put so many screws into the spine so that's not true, they don't lose much. Most of the uh, growth happens in the long bones of the body, like the thigh and the leg and all that. So uh, were you concerned when I told you that you'll need to be, uh, we'll need to put screws and do a major surgery, which would last probably for about four to five hours? I think I knew I was mentally prepared when I walked in. I knew that I 
might have needed surgery. But for my parents, definitely it was more of a taken. They were taken aback a little bit, reasonably so. It's a pretty major surgery. Um, but I think for me, the focus was more on the outcome because I was. Um, it wasn't. It became a little bit more difficult to do, like I said, the daily thing. So the focus was more like after everything, I'll be a lot more comfortable. But so I wasn't very very apprehensive of the surgery. Oh. So, uh, was there a lot of pain after surgery or was it manageable, was it a comfortable surgery? Because it is a big surgery where we put an incision which is more than a foot long, we insert uh, screws which are like about 18 to 20 in number, we put rods in there, do a manure which corrects the deformity and straightens a crooked spine which has been crooked for a long time. So, there's a lot of muscle imbalance uh, which has to be corrected and there's a big incision. So. Was there a lot of pain? Was it a torture to an unbearable experience after it surgery? It, it wasn't unbearable. It was completely manageable. It took some time for me to get comfortable with uh, my body after the surgery, but it was definitely not like the doctor that tortured us, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. That's uh, important to know because we all the, we are on the constant pursuit to reduce the patient's pain after surgery so that their surgical experience is much better. Um, when did you walk after the surgery? People think that uh, after su surgery means bed rest and no walking around for two for a month or two. When did you walk after surgery? Two days after two the days surgery. After surgery. Yeah. And how, how many days were you in the hospital after that? Five days. Five days. After yeah. Yeah. So usually the surgical course is uh, post-operative course is uh, typically three to four days of admission and then the stitches come off by two weeks and within a month you were back to college. Did it affect your college life? Did it affect your academic uh, pursuits? Definitely not. I was, uh, I mean, it took me around, in a month, I guess, I was able to handle long days of college and things like that. Carry a backpack? Yes, and now it's, six months in and I'm able to handle 12, 13 hour days very, very easily. And so it didn't take a lot of time away from college and things like that. Okay. Yeah. So when I look at uh, scoliosis, there are certain aspects to it. One is that of a pain factor. Two is that of cosmosis. And three is the psychological impact it has on a person. And also four, whether it affects academics, because usually we're dealing with young individuals. So, in these four factors, did you get uh, a change in the pain perspective before and after surgery? Did it help in pain? Um, definitely did because the protrusion was a lot. So, it was very uncomfortable to um, lie, down in a, lie down on my back or to sit a certain way and things like that. But now that's kind of evened out a little bit, I'm able to do those things more comfortably. Cosmosis? A um, lot, a lot. lot. Yeah. So, cosmos is yeah. major. Yeah. Yes. And um, uh, academics, not affected. No, it never made a difference. And before surgery, after surgery, I mean, the surgery didn't really stop or it poses any obstacle with my academic pursuit. And uh, what do your friends say? I mean, everybody who's close to me can like see a difference, huge difference. And they're very, very happy that I went through with the surgery. So, to put in a nutshell, do you have two or three things to tell our young viewers on how you would? Yeah, uh, that surgery can be scary, but if it's done, um, but your doctors know what they're doing, and um, if only they see that you require surgery, they would recommend it to you. And if they do, um, it's nothing to be scared of. Everything is monitored and that you would be a lot more comfortable after you get the surgery. So if that's the best thing for you, you should get it done. Uh, an insight into your surgery, we do have these uh, uh, devices during surgery, which monitors your uh, spinal cord function okay. so that we can do a safe surgery. Okay. When we correct a deformity of the spine, we actually monitor, we put electrodes in the scalp as well as the legs and we pass electric current through the spinal cord to make sure that our screws and the deformity maneuvers, correction maneuvers do not uh, affect the spinal cord so that the patient is able to walk soon after surgery. 
So a lot of planning and teamwork goes into surgeries which uh, complex surgeries like scoliosis and tumors and so many other spinal uh, surgeries. So uh, that was Anushka for us. Thank you very much for your insights Anushka.